Okay, go ahead. <laughs> if you want beautiful women, come to Arizona. Is that what you want me to say? Yes. Because <laughs> look, we were having this conversation off of air, and honestly, ASU, I feel like I see it in every very pretty girl's bio, ASU, and I, I need to move to Arizona now. Yeah. That's facts. Yeah, I was, I was telling them like pre-recording, go to downtown Gilbert and you will be shocked. Oh Your head God. will just be, you can't, you won't be able to focus. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I feel like that's a hundred percent because every time I'm on Instagram, everyone says Arizona and I'm yeah. like, I need to move yeah. there. I, yeah. This podcast will probably be live by then, but we're planning to go to Arizona like yes. next week. Anyways. I told you, just, just go into my DMs. I'll tell you where to I'm go gonna... and I'll set you free. <laughs> and you can tell me how it goes. All right. I will definitely I'll, I'll tell you where the hottie, I'll tell you where hottie sightings, like the spots are. Hottie just sightings. Go. There we go. <laughs> Did I make up a new thing? Yeah, I like that. Hottie sightings. sightings. That's it. That could be an Instagram page where you just take pictures. <laughs> That'd be a little weird. That'll be your next podcast. <laughs> right? Hottie sightings. <laughs> In Tempe, we found a beautiful hey. blonde who's five foot four. You never know. You never know. Anyways, welcome to Sus. Share your scare where we talk to real people with real stories. I'm your host, Brennan Taylor. This is the co-host, Jake Taylor. What's up? And we have on a very lovely person today. She is an actress and an author of a sucky love story, Overcoming unhappily ever after yep. Brittany Louise Taylor what, what? welcome Yay. to the podcast thank you of course thanks for coming on and I just want to tell the audience she's not our sister but we do have the same last name yeah which is pretty cool. It We're is already cool. friends just That's because of that. Like, <laughs> we already have a connection. Yeah. Yes. Of course. We might be related in some weird way. We'll have to look Maybe. at our genealogy. Yeah. We, we get our family tree and there we are. Yeah. You know, we're like, oh, we have the same grandma. I, ac- I actually had, I have a funny story about that. I was on Bumble and I swiped on this guy and I'm like, I swear he looks like my cousin. I swear. I was like, I'm like I know I'm related to this guy. No, no, get this. Oh my God. So. I started asking him questions. He said he was from um, Montana. I said, oh, Great Falls. He said, yeah. I said, oh, well, my mom was a wheat farmer. He's like, my family, too. I said, oh, my (laughs) uncle's name is this. And then he goes, he's my cousin. (laughs) Wait, did he unmatch? No, um, it kind of got awkward because I think he was a little interested. (laughs) And I knew right away. I was like, because we our family. If you we if we get together, you just know we're all related. We have really strong genetics (laughs) and it's freaky. Like family reunions, you're like, oh, my God, (laughs) even like even my son looks a lot like me. Like, I don't know what is in our bloodline, but we all have these high cheekbones. Like it just. Yeah. So I was like, I'm pretty sure he looks like we're family yeah. <laughs> so wait what happened next <laughs> Not, nothing happened. i wanted him because my mom wanted information on that side of the family she's uh, like have him come over we'll talk but um we just never hung oh out i think he was a little weirded out by it that is so but funny. you can meet your cousins on bumble <laughs> hey <laughs> long lost cousins. not sponsored but hey you want to meet your cousin sign up for bumble <laughs> <laughs> i hope we don't get sick <laughs> no, no, no. that is so joking, funny completely joking completely yeah. joking well, let, let's let's jump into something real quick so okay. i was looking Looking at your YouTube channel, and you—you yeah. you were on YouTube for like twelve years, way too long, a long yeah. time. And we 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 wanted a question like, what what has changed from now <laughs> to twelve years ago? Like now, the, now the it's, platform itself. Well, I feel like it just—it's constantly evolving. You know right. that. Like when I first started it, it was more like everyone just had their iMac computers and were filming with iMovie and like tr- using the same songs and uh-huh. the same effects and being like, "Woo, we're trying to be creative," you know. And at that point, they would feature videos on the homepage. Oh, they would? They, yeah, there was like 50. That's how you got big. Oh. You would want to get featured. And I, on purpose, started making videos, like, if it was Valentine's Day, because I knew they had to put things for categories. So I'm like, I'm going to put up a Valentine's uh, Day video, because I'm one of 20 people they can pick to yeah. feature for that category this week. So there really wow. wasn't even that many YouTubers no. back then. Oh, my God. No. And, and how, it was terrifying, because, like, none of us knew what we were doing. Like, yeah. you know, just to get... You know, DSL, DSLRs weren't huge yet, so you were getting like a little handy cam. So oh I had like a God. Sony little handy cam. Wow. That's and crazy. I, I was so broke, I got one at Best Buy. And I, I figured by the time I made payments and paid it off in like a year and a half, I could do that. So, <laughs> so I got it like zero interest and then just made payments wow. and bought the Sony Handycam because I was sick of filming on my iBook. That is so funny. So, wait, so there was only a select number of influencers. Because I feel like yeah. now, like, during now, a holiday, now, now if you, I, yeah, if I don't you do something know. for a holiday, it doesn't it doesn't does, doesn't even do good. No, and, and my thing too is there's some people I don't even know about. Mm-hmm. I'm like yeah. I didn't even I didn't know you before you contacted me. I'm like what where like every time I like you just throw a rock and there's another I one. No, I was in I was in uh, Thailand and we were making videos and we okay. ended up meeting these other uh, YouTubers in Thailand and I had no idea that these people had five million followers <laughs> yeah. living in Thailand. <laughs> And, but like we met up and we they oh, were, were, they, super were awesome. they the ones that built their house? I think I've no, heard no, no, of them. No, okay. no, not, not those ones. Okay. <laughs> no, that, that's a weird story. Yeah, yeah it is. They're kind of using their 
fans to build I, it, right? I, or, I feel like I, think it's I just someone, remember it being sketchy. Yeah, I think someone is going over to that village with a camera uh-huh. and then like and saying, pay, build this yeah, and, and I'll, I'll give you $100. $100. And then and the then videos the, make them like $10,000, $15,000, $20,000. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know, though. That's this just, is just conspiracy <laughs> theories <laughs> between Jake and I. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was so weird because we were in Thailand. And, and like, I bet you they were super cool and chill and you oh, never know, so right? Yeah. And I was like, damn, how does this person just hiding underneath the rug with 5 million YouTube followers and stuff? And they were getting recognized all the time and everything. And I thought he was famous, but these guys were famous. In Thailand, (laughs) Thailand, ain't nobody knows me in Thailand. I was walking down the street fine. These guys were getting But the question is, are they, okay, they're famous in Thailand as well. Yes. But but I don't think they're famous like in the U.S. They're just famous Famous in in Thailand. People know them from Thailand because they're they're, like the biggest thing in Thailand. I remember like when there was the first VidCon, one of my friends is like the biggest beauty blogger in Germany and he could not get into VidCon. So I was contacting them. I'm like, look, he, like, I got him in. Yeah. But I'm like, he can't get in. He's like the biggest. Biggest oh thing God. in Germany uh, at it's that point. Crazy. Like as soon as you go to a different country, like yeah. you know, what I mean, you really find out how big you are when you yeah. go to another country, and if nobody knows you. But I think it keeps you super humble. Oh, yeah. for sure. It just, it just at the end of the day, it's not real. But then, right. there, but then there's other people like Amanda Cerny that all her fans are in India. India. <laughs> Yeah, like she, mo- well, she's a hottie, so they're yeah, like, but the majority yeah. of her fans, <laughs> like, hey. she's like, I've seen my own DMs. Yeah. I want to move to the United States for you. <laughs> but no, I think she started like going. She went to India and started making like India like type of content to oh, like it drew the, them in. Do you know? Do you know what else happened recently? Uh, Drake Bell from Drake and Josh. Yeah, he actually switched over his whole life to to Mexico. He went to Mexico, <gasps> yeah. did a tour did because that. he's like a he's like he makes music and stuff. He did a tour, completely sold out every show in Mexico. Okay. So he said. What? You know what? F- the U.S. Yeah. I'm out of here. He went to Mexico and he changed his name to Drake Campania, which, <laughs> which means Bell in Spanish. I kid you not. I can't make this shit up. Yeah. If I found out my audience was all like in Mexico, I think I would really take up learning Spanish and yeah. switch over too. So I don't Might blame as well. him. I, right? I, un poquito. I, I grew up. In, I grew up in Arizona, so I remember like Coco I like you know, you have to take Spanish. If yeah. You're in Arizona. No, we took Spanish in high school too, and like I'm actually Mexican, and I still didn't really learn anything. It's hard. Not at all. I want to get into because like I, I hit you up on Instagram because you did. I heard I heard your story and mm-hmm. your story is probably one of the craziest stories I have ever heard. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, it really is a movie. If someone hasn't hit you up to make a movie yet, well, I mean, the problem with making a movie is liability because they like mm. want my ex to be not alive. <laughs> so, right. Like they don't want because like there's just too many. Yeah. You know, so I, I like I don't know if maybe eventually it will. I mean, my whole thing why I even came out about it is I'm a smart girl and it happened mm-hmm. to me. So if it happened to me, it could happen to anyone. And I always thought I could never, you know, I was my BS meter was great. Like I could always tell people if if they were real or fake right. or trying to use me. And I completely now don't say it. I I just say now I don't know and I don't trust anyone. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I like you, but I don't trust you. Yeah. Right. Because um, for the people who don't know, I mean, Brittany yeah. will get into her story in a second. Yeah. But like you're you're in a new relationship now, right? No. Are you you've gotten I'm into single. new relationships? I, I've been dating some. Dating. But That's it's what I meant. it's just yeah, it's super complicated though because like when people find out about my past yeah. they're like Shit, if I screw her over she's gonna write a book about me <laughs> <laughs> when, they, when they don't understand that it was it was literally we'll get into why but it was yeah. just it was more therapy and the only way I could talk about it right. safely and legally was through a book and I feel I, like that's like a closure thing too as well for you like getting yeah. it out there and like fully opening up you know and it was just that crazy that yeah. I like it needed to I it was it was my therapy to get it out but yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I know I'm on the edge of my seat, and I'm I'm betting the listeners are on the edge of their seat. Let's let's get into this story. Okay. If you don't if you don't yeah. mind, let's let's jump. Well, on that's why I'm here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to be too blunt about it. All right, tell me about, tell me about your about biggest it. fear. <laughs> no, I because it's been four years. I kind of yeah. had to like organize my brain and go back and think about it. But um, basically, how this happened is I had only been single for two weeks. And my ex had dumped me to marry a Russian for her green card. Oh and God. so I was not in a good headspace at the point when I met Milo yeah. on Tinder. And this is like pre-Bumble, like everyone was on Tinder. Right. All my friends were on Tinder. It was super awkward. We were like, Ooh, what do, I, do I swipe right or left on them? Because my guy friends will think I like them. Yeah. But is it rude? Because they saw me there. Right. <laughs> right? It, was a very, it was a very awkward time. But... Um, I remember when I saw him, he had like four pictures on his profile. And the first one was him on an airplane. Then there was him with like his dog, you know, the token like cuddling photo. Um, there was one on him, a boat. He had like an oar and like a wife beater where like, oh, I have muscles okay. kind of picture. 
And then there was one of him like shirtless holding a grapefruit and like knifing it, wow. which was a little yeah. weird. Huh. But I mean, but he was cute. Yeah. Swipe swipe right. He really yeah. thought out all of his pictures. Yeah, it was very. And it said on his profile that he was six foot two, doctor, tennis player from oh. Europe, right? And right, I, so I, automatically I, right, right swipe. Well, no. Here's the thing. I my normal people that I date usually have no car and no job <laughs> and like are artist types. So I was trying to break. I was like, okay, I'm going to go for someone who's a professional, yeah. who's not in the industry, who's not a musician, not a cameraman, not, and like has a job right. and a career that has nothing to do with me or what I do. Yeah. So he instantly started hitting me up and messaging me, and we made plans to go to coffee that weekend. Well, come that weekend, nothing. He just ghosted me. Oh, for and real? I was like, oh, whatever. I wasn't that into him at that point. So I was like, whatever. But then two weeks later, I was at VidCon with some friends. And we were heading out to dinner, and he hit me up at, like, I don't know if it was, it was late at night, and he was like, oh, come to drinks with my cousin and I and Marina Del Rey. And I was like, no, sorry, busy. Right. So then he hits me up the next day. He's like, come to coffee. And I said, look, we had plans. You blew me off. Best of luck. It's basically what I said. He's like, no. Good, he's good like, on you. He's like, let me make it up to you. Like, please. And I felt like I had something to prove because of my ex, and I was pissed off. I wanted to, like, dress really nice, go show him what he's missing, and then never talk to him again. <laughs> right, like, right. I was like, okay, fine. You want you want to meet up? Let's do it. <laughs> I'll show you what you miss. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was I was at that like hate stage right. of getting over. I was very of much course. like English was definitely like a rebound. Yeah. So I met him for coffee and it was kind of awkward on our first date. Like, yeah, he was good looking, but he instantly started talking about how he was doing facelifts in Beverly Hills mm. and that he was working at, at a, a doctor as a doctor in the ER in San Diego. And then he had like an apartment in Marina Del Rey, an apartment in Beverly Hills, and his family had a yacht. Oh, so he was very flexy. And I yeah, hated it. Oh, okay. I instantly like I I just felt myself going click 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 like the walls going yeah, in yeah, place. Yeah. Like I don't like when people do that because right, yeah. most people yeah I don't know it's just not my thing. If I, I was if I was looking for someone with money, I would probably have settled down by now. I'm still like crazy and looking for love, which if it never happens, fine. I have romance novels. I'm gonna right. be okay. <laughs> but um. So, and he also said that his family had like a furniture company, that they had a uh, coffee company, and they had um, a water company. So they, they had these companies, and he's helping them with their business. Okay. So I ended the day, he wa insists on walking me to my car. I'm like, okay. So we walked to the car, and he's like, come to lunch with me tomorrow. And before I even thought about it, I said, okay. And then later I was like, what am I, why? Why did I say yes to this? Yeah. So I, we went out to lunch the next day, but before each date, I had horrible anxiety mm. like that. But I kept thinking it was because I was dating someone that isn't my normal type. Uh -huh. I kept thinking he's a man, not a boy. Maybe that's why I'm having such anxiety. Got but it. before every date, I had like red alert. Like my body, I w would literally have horrible anxiety. I'd never had that before. Wow. wow. So date two turned into like date three, turned into date four. And it's like he started to slowly morph into what he realized that I liked. Right. Like more soft-spoken, not so braggy, kind, like funny, and then I started to like this guy, right? And before I knew it, I kind of had like fallen for him. So, <laughs> we, I, I was like in love for the first time in my life, which I, which was kind of weird for me because I thought I was incapable of that because I'd never fallen in love with any of my exes. Like I love them as a person, but I never had that like in love. Right. Yeah. And I would ask all my friends, "How do you know?" And they're like, "When you know, you know." And I'm like, exactly. "I hate that answer. I hate that yeah. answer so much." Because how do you how do you really know, right? Yeah. So I had I was in love with him, but the problem was that his family at that point he said that they basically wanted him to come back to Europe because they had given him some time to sow his oats in the United States, but he needed to come back to Serbia because that's where he was from and um, help with the family businesses. And you know he had had enough time in the United States, but then he met me and wanted to stay, and that I would literally be, like, he would be over at my house and I'd hear his uncle, like, screaming at him on the phone. Oh, wow. And then I felt awful because I felt like it was my fault that he's staying in the United States to date me and right. not going back to Serbia, but he's like, I met you, I'm gonna stay. So before you know it, his dog moved in with me because I had a, a cute, I had a little Spanish style bungalow in Highland Park and it was the cutest little 1920s oh, house. Wow. And I, I would get up at night and like when I had to go to the bathroom and hug the walls, like I loved really? this place, That's it so was cute. my friend. Yeah. Like, I love this house. So his um, dog moved in first. And then, because he was in San Diego, and I figured, oh, that's a way for us to see each other more, too. If the dog, it was a little sneaky on uh, my part, right? Yeah. If the dog moves in, then he has to come see the dog all right. the time, right? And he, just, he kept having to go to San Diego to feed the dog and take care of the dog. I'm like, well, if the dog's here, then you don't. Exactly. Yeah, and then before you know it, then he moved in. But 
his family cut him off. So his he his apartment in Beverly Hills is gone. The apartment mm-hmm. in, in Marina Del Rey gone. His lease on his car was ending. So the car he had to turn it back into like Lexus or whatever. So all everything that he had completely this got torn away. away. And yeah, all it was all the money coming from the family. He's, he said from his family. Uh, we'll get we'll get to okay. it. <laughs> but, uh, I'm getting we'll excited get over here. No, no, you ha- there's a lot you have to explain yeah. before. Yeah. yeah. And then um, also, too, he had told me that he was, like, a pro tennis player. Like, he said that Jokovic and him used to, like, you know, play when they were younger, but then he tore his ACL, and that's why he didn't, you know, end up pursuing it. But at that point, he started teaching tennis lessons to these really rich women in all over L.A., like, these older (laughs) women for, like, 150 an hour uh, to make money. So then he was driving all the time and... I think at that point is when he started, like, we started fighting. But I wouldn't really say it's, like, we. It's, like, he started mm-hmm. fighting. Because my personality type is just not – I'll start crying like that. I'm not – I just don't like confrontation. Yeah. I don't like when people yell. So I think at that point is when, like, the verbal abuse started. But it wasn't – it was, like, once a week or once every few weeks. But then it got to the point where I was counting it. It was, like, oh, he, it's been two days since he's yelled at me. Great. Like, really? I used to start to, like, count how many days wow. in between the verbal outbursts. Wow. But then we met in 2015, and then the early 2016 in January, I put out a video, and I finally announced that I had a boyfriend because we've been dating for a little while at that point. So I I put, like, a a few photos of Milos, you know, the dog, and kind of, like, announced it to YouTube because I thought, well, it was not going to be super awkward when I, like, post a a photo on Instagram. or I wasn't expecting on, like, making him, like, my vlog boyfriend. At that point, I was doing sketches and music video parodies. I wasn't doing vlogs. So... Um, I put out a video saying that he was my boyfriend, and this woman, I'm, let's just call her Bunny. That's not her real name. I, like, I had to change a lot of names for right. legality. But she, like, I, I remember I was in my back room with him, and he gets a call from this woman, and she's, like, going off on him, and I could just see the color, like, draining from his face. Oh, and then he goes in the kitchen, and he's just, like, pacing back and forth. And I'm like, what is going on? Did someone die? Like, why? Right. Why are you, what? So he comes back, and he tells me, that there's this girl, because he used to go out with his friends, his other Serbian friends. Like, he had friends that were doctors and lawyers and whatever, and he would go out with them and, and party and go to these dinners. And I, I'm not a possessive girlfriend. I'm like, cool, have fun. Like, right. I'm gonna, then I'll just, you know, take a bubble bath and go to sleep early. <laughs> Great. Right. Like, I never questioned any of it. So he said it was one of the girls that used to come out to dinner with his friends that had a crush on him and kept trying to pursue mm. him. But then she was now saying that they were together, and she found out that he was married. So basically, the grandmother that he told me in Beverly Hills was actually his wife. Oh, my wow. God. So, but he told me that um, he gave his last $170,000 to her, for her to marry him so he could stay in the United States and date me. And at this point, too, he told me that his family was Serbian mafia. Oh, shit. And that's why he wanted to get out. Because he, he had kind of hinted at his family having some nefarious things they were doing, like money laundering. Or like, really? But he was saying, I escaped in the middle of the night, and I basically wanted to do my medicine, and that was not me and not my life. And I kept thinking, you know, justifying, because I was in love and stupid. I kept, you know, justifying, like, oh, well, if I, you can't help who your parents are. You know oh, what I mean? Like that. Yeah. I kept, you know, when love is blind. Right. So... Um, but I believed him at that point, but then I still felt like I was being cheated on, which was super weird because mm-hmm. he didn't cheat on me, I thought. And, but I still felt like, cause she was gorgeous and she hit me up. She tagged me on Instagram. She was sending me stuff on Snapchat. Oh my she God. was emailing me and I didn't respond to anything. I didn't like say like, you bitch, leave my man alone. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't create any animosity between us, I just didn't respond to but her were, at all. Were you seeing it though? Like you were seeing exactly. Yeah, what I she saw said? photos of them together, but it was more like you know his arm was kind of farther right. away, and the body language didn't say we're together and we're a couple. It just was them with like a group or them, you know. Mm-hmm. So I didn't. I thought, yeah, right. this is his story is feasible. Yeah. And he was like, you have to believe me, and he was just so broken about it. And at that point, I had got a hosting job. I had auditioned here in LA for a big car company. Mm. So I went to Detroit, and all this was going on. When, when I was like, "This is just nuts." And I also was doing a, a video for um, I forget. I was, I'll just say a science fiction channel. Okay. So I was filming at the Magic Castle. Had to get on an airplane. I this girl's claiming he's cheating on me, oh, and then I'm going to Detroit the next day, and I'm wow. like, "This is so messed up." But I think at that point, I really started to. I don't know. It's, I just like, and then you know, be, between everything, just the I was financially supporting him at this point. I had co-signed on a car, which I had oh, now no. taken over the lease on because he had no credit. So to take out, like, you know, to get a car, you you know, it was like maybe twelve percent interest or more, and I could get two percent interest because I had good credit. Right. And I thought he'd be good for the payments. Right. 
shame and you on were me. In love, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Which I, yeah, I was not, I'm way too giving. So, but at that point, I, I've started to like feel myself pull back a little bit. I'm like, this is insane. He's married. This one was saying he's cheating on me. He's saying his family's mafia. Like, I was getting a little, and I think he felt it too. Because a few months later, I was I kind of just was at a point. I ha- was still hosting for that car company, mm-hmm. and we were doing an auto show in, in New York. So I was going to be there for two weeks, and I was looking forward to it. I'm like, this is weird. I'm like, I get two weeks away from him. Oh, yes. Wow. So when I was in New York, I fully planned on breaking up with him. And at that point, he was also talking marriage. And like when he, when it got broken off, he's like, I need to keep it for so long because of my green card because of the ex-wife. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool. So we were talking marriage, but I really wanted to break up with him. But while I was in New York, at that point, I was vegan. And all of a sudden, I started craving protein. I'm like, God, I just want some chicken. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I want like a protein bar. And my period was late. And I thought maybe it was just because of stress because I was thinking about leaving him. Mm -hmm. So just on the off whim, I went on Amazon and bought like the pack that has like 25 pregnancy tests with these little strips. I'm like, well, if I try it 10 times, right? (laughs) Right. It's going to give me an answer. So I got back to uh, California, and sure enough, I'm pregnant. Oh, yeah. And it was that was like the hardest moment in my life because right. I had an ongoing joke that I was going to freeze my eggs, and when I was 40, think about it. Like I had, an, mm-hmm. like I never had thought about being a parent. Like I love kids. Like I get along really well with kids, and even more so now. But at that point, it would just be all I saw being pregnant was would be something that would tie me to this man that I mm-hmm. cannot stand at this point for the rest of my life. So. I got really, really sick, which some women do, and I had to be put on drugs, <laughs> so I was on Declegis, oh, man. which is like, it's a, uh, it's basically an antihistamine and vitamin B6, okay. and I couldn't work, one, because I was depressed, and I was like, how am I going to tell my YouTube audience that I'm pregnant with this guy, like, that I don't want right. to be with? So I just, I kind of went to bed for five months because I was just throwing up and so nauseated, and the debt started to pile up, and then he still hadn't passed his board exams because I was financially supporting him so he could get his boards done so he could become a doctor, right? So I was trying to support his dream, and he still hadn't gotten a job or anything. Oh, my God. So about, I think I, 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 don't, I think it was May of 2016, um, I was just at the point that I was so sick. He wasn't contributing anything. I didn't want to be with him. I'm just going to, you know, I had ho- pregnancy hormones, so I went and got a giant black trash bag and started gathering up all his stuff. And I'm like, he needs to get out. He oh, needs man. to leave. You took initiative there. I, huh? I did. I was a crazy <laughs> pregnant woman. So when I was in my house and he went ballistic, he ended up chasing me in all these different rooms into the, the closet. I got my phone. I, I ran into the living room and I was trying to call 911 and he kind of pinned me against the wall, took my phone away hurt my pinky, but then I was trying to push him off of me because he was on top of me, right. and he goes, my eye, my eye, and, like, bolted from the house. It was so weird because I knew at that moment that he had done something wrong and he had violated me in a way. Like, this was an attack, like yeah. a physical attack and not just verbal. Like, he had crossed the line, but then he made me believe that I hurt him. Does that make uh, sense? Yeah, like, played victim on it. Yeah, and he, uh, so I ended up paying for his you. doctor yeah. bill, which I didn't even, I never saw the bill because I was like, oh, my God, I, you know. And then at right. that point, I was like, okay, like, you know, we'll just, so it, it basically, it put it back on me because oh, it's man. always the victim's fault. Yeah. So that was the first time for domestic violence. So... Um, uh, but then magically after that, he had told me before he had money in like a fund in Russia that had been sanctioned, right? Cause his family is so wealthy and uh-huh. has all this stuff. So he basically told me that the sanctions are being lifted and he was getting $10 million, $10 billion. $10 with a B, billion? $10 billion. Wow. No, and he had, he had the bank receipt and all this really? stuff. So we could start looking, he, he, um, got my friend who's a real estate agent to start showing us multi-million dollar homes in oh Malibu. God in Rancho Santa Fe, and I'm talking like $10, $12 million homes. Wow. And so he convinced me to sell my house oh, because And this is the house you love that you were hugging the uh, walls. You have no idea. Like, I, like, it broke my heart for, it's been over four years now, but like the first three, even thinking about it, I'm like, I can't go on Zillow. Oh my God, this is horrible. But he, he convinced me to, to sell my house oh, because he's like, well, you're not gonna need it. We're gonna have, he was showing me, painting this picture. Like, here's this beautiful home that we're gonna move to. Here will be the playground. Our son will be playing with his friends there. He just painted this whole thing. Mm-hmm. So, and in LA, it's crazy. Things sell in a week. So right. mine was listed, and within a week, we had like a really nice offer. And at the point when we were doing inspections, then he came in one day, and I remember he looked really upset. And I was working on some video, like some DIY. 
And I'm like, what? He's like, well, the banker ran away with the money. So the one, because he had the paperwork of these different people, so the guy that was going to get it out ran away with the money. And I, he's like, well, what do you want to do? Because So at this point, all the money's gone. He said his, the money was gone that was oh coming, my and my house is selling. Gone, but I'm, yeah. I was so in debt at that point because I was financially supporting both of us, right, insurance, yeah. and I had been sick. And, and he... It was his idea. We started doing family vlogs. I, I never thought I would be a vlogger. I'm just not. I just don't think I'm that interesting. Right. Like, I would prefer to, like, yeah. play character. I just feel the same I way. I just don't. Because I just say this. I say dad jokes all day long. They're right. really stupid. And only I think they're funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, the few people that, like, watch, like, they get me. But not many do. Right. Like, I'm just not that outrageous and entertaining to be doing vlogs all the time. So, but it was his idea to start doing these, these family vlogs. And they just went huge. Because people were completely fascinated how uh-huh. like virgin britney who had been waiting till marriage is now knocked up by this do- european doctor right. and looking at multi-million dollar homes they're like what is this it seems interesting I'd yeah it. so like it was a good premise for a reality yeah. show so we had you know been vlogging at that point and he like kept pushing me more and more to san diego he said that you know we need to get to san diego because he's like our son here will get like asthma because of the bad air in los angeles and was like really pushing like my fear buttons He's like, oh, and it's so so much cleaner and so much nicer. And he he swore to me that he'd get his residency at one of the four hospitals down in San Diego because there's only a few teaching hospitals here in L.A. and it's harder and more competitive, but there's more teaching hospitals. I don't know if this is correct, but that's what he told me. So take that with a grain of salt. Right. But um, so I, he's like, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, well, we'll just stick to the plan. I knew after selling my house, paying off the debt, that I would have enough money to survive for maybe four months. Like beyond that, and then he would really need to get his stuff right. done and step up and like be a man, like yeah. get a job and <laughs> help, me with this, <laughs> help me with the baby. So um, I sold my house, broke my heart, moved down to San Diego, and then the first week that we we're there, my mom had come to help us move, right? And I was doing a, a branded video for a bread company, and I found this like studio that had a green screen area, right? And it's garlic bread, so it smells awful. And I didn't want to leave it on a hot set because they were filming on the other, they had this big trash can. And I'm like, no, let's just take it with us and throw it out at a gas station or at home. Milos like ripped the tray out of my hands in front of my mom, like took it, dumped in this trash can. I start crying because I'm like, I'm like, you don't do that on a hot set. You don't put stinky garlic bread in an area where people are (laughs) filming. I'll never be allowed back in this place to film, right? right? So that was like the first time my mom had seen, like I had, I kind of, protected everyone around me like I did not tell any of my friends about like the verbal abuse like she knew about the altercation that happened with a finger but like Milos was just that good mm-hmm. like he yeah like, even now I get like hiccups thinking about it but like she was just that convincing but um she he she that was the first time she got to see him and like kind of like see the side that I had seen that was a lot more scary and like the like flip a switch and not the charming Milos so um, I, for whatever reason that day when we were done filming, he just really had to play tennis. And my um, desktop computer, the hard drive, it went. And so I was editing on my laptop, which I hated at that point. I'm like, this tiny screen. <laughs> so uh, like my mom had nothing to watch because we didn't have the cable cl- connected. And he's, he's like, oh, she can use my laptop. So he gives her my mom's laptop and goes to play tennis. And my mom's just going to go on YouTube, right? So she starts to type you and it starts to populate huge's you porn and oh, no. whatever. And my mom goes, Brittany, what is this? Wow. <laughs> so, no, get this. So I I went into his history. I'm like, okay, it's open. This is on. What's right. going on, right? And it, it didn't like look like there was anything from the past day. So I just but I started typing like sex or certain keywords into the search. All the time that while I was pregnant at night when he was supposed to be studying, he was up watching porn oh all night God. long. And I mean kinky interactive stuff. You gotta understand, I'm on my due date, we had moved in October, my due date was November 29th. I was ready to pop any day, and I find out that this guy who I've changed my whole entire life for, when he's supposed to be studying at night, has been watching like girl on girl action oh, no. all night long. So and you, me, ca- you caught him in 4K. Uh, like, what, what, what the receipts were there. What, yeah, what I did is I took screenshots. I was going to make it like his desktop screensaver oh, or whatever. So, that, so when he got home, he'll be like, I was going to be like, honey, do you want to talk about this? <laughs> right? Yeah. But so my, then at that point, my mom hated him because she's like, pregnancy is, is like, it's, it's like sacred. Like, yeah. how dare you do this to my daughter? So I'm like, great. We're living in this apartment. My mom's staying in a room. She's going to help with the baby. I'm about to have the baby at any moment. 
my mom now hates Milos, and there's this war going on. Because Milos had taken me, like, a lot of my friends, he never liked any of them. So he had slowly separated me Uh, from any of my friends, any of my guy friends. I had one of my friends, he was gay, and he was a dancer, and he made him really uncomfortable. And I'm like, well, it's not my problem if you have a problem with your sexuality. Like, there's nothing, like, people are made in all different, like, shapes and colors. It's not... But I, I, because I loved him, like, and I didn't want to fight, right. slowly distanced myself from the people that I was closest oh, to man. in my life. Yeah. So then his mom came into town a few weeks later, and my mom, my mom was, like, trying to play nice, but she really didn't like Milos. And then his mom came in from Serbia, and that's when things got really interesting. Because the moment she stepped in... It was, like, super possessive of my son, being awful to my mom, because obviously Milo should have been telling her. So now I'm in this 1,600-square-foot apartment with two mothers and my, like, mentally cheating ex, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it was just – and in my mind, I was, like, I just wanted – I fought so hard to have a good birth at that point. Like, I'd come to terms that I'm having a baby, like, is actually a person – I had gotten a crib, I like nested, I got the clothing, all the stuff I needed, I read what I needed to, like I was ready, right? So I kind of lived in denial up until the birth and was like just trying to be happy and positive all the time, but it was causing major stress for me because I'm trying to keep everyone not at each other's throats. But it was weird, like during my pregnancy, Milos, you know, is a doctor, right? Mm-hmm. But he didn't once go look at the screen, whatever. He was watching Angry Birds and kept taking naps while I'm in labor. Really? About 15 hours in, my mom's like, okay, your turn to hold her hand. And I, I had not, I wanted, I thought I wanted all natural birth. But then my, um, my contractions slowed down and they put me on Pitocin. And basically what it does, it makes your body unnaturally have like strong contractions every time. When usually you have like a level ten, a level okay. five, it like mm-hmm. it like and you get feel good hormones too in between. So like nature helps you through it. Uh-huh. When they put you on pitocin, it's awful. So after mm-hmm. three hours of pitocin, I was like, give me an epidural now. So it was about twenty three hours of labor. Wow. I finally had my son, and that's like that was like the changing moment. Of course, because I, I you it's it's so true. It's so it's just like the the movies and everything. They say like a child coming into the world. Your heart, I can't even explain it. Like, I would do anything. Like, I would throw myself in front of a bus for my child. And he was the cutest thing on the planet. Mm-hmm. So, but the moment my son was born, his mom kept going, my baby, my oh baby. My and he was having trouble nursing. And she went and she, like, grabbed my chest and, like, tried. And I was like, I slapped her hand. I was like, what are you doing? Like, mama instincts kicked in. And yeah. I was like, get away from me. Right. So it was a weird thing in the hospital, too, where, like, my mom had, um, we finally got some food, and I was starving, because they don't feed you while you're giving labor, because they're afraid if they have to put you in a C-section about you, like, throwing up or having Mm. food in your system, so Mm -hmm. I was starving. So we had, our food finally came in, and my mom was just going to hand, like, a tray to Milos of his order in the hospital, and... His mom like got, got up and grabbed the stuff, and she's like, "I feed my son," and walks weird. Home. like That's weird. So weird. It just got, and then Milos took her home because he's like, "This is just not right. working." So we finally get home from the hospital, and it was just hell on earth because I couldn't do anything right. I was trying to give my child a bath for the first time, and she took him away from me, and she's like, "This is how you're supposed to do it from the bottom up." I'm like, "Everything I read go you are from the cleanest to the dirtiest. Right. You don't do their bottom and then do their face. You right. know what I mean?" Yeah. Yeah. And then nothing I, like, you know, my carrier wasn't good. Like, the clothes I was, he couldn't wear clothes because he was such a hot baby, so I just kept swaddling him. If I put clothes on him, he gets so sweaty and fussy. He just, even now, he's a natural heater. Like, I don't even know where, that's not on my side. That's right? like me. I can't ever wear a jacket. Yeah, he, like, he was dying. like, he was like happy just to be in a diaper and that's it. Like, oh, I'm yeah. living large. Like, this is my <laughs> life. And I just listened to my mommy instincts. And I'm mm-hmm. like, you know, we're in an apartment where we're not outside. Like, mm-hmm. just swaddling him is fine. Yeah. Yeah. But we had this whole war because whenever I leave the room, she put clothes on him. Mm. And then I just so, couldn't do I couldn't do anything right, right, right? So everything you wanted to do, she was against it. Yeah, and yeah. she kept, whenever oh he was crying, God. she kept taking it from me. And she kept saying, my baby, my baby, oh, my little baby. And I was like, no, you did not just give birth. Like, yeah. this is my child, right? So about four days of having that, I was just at the point that I'm like, look, I'm sleep deprived. I have to feed this kid every two hours. I just pushed him out of my body. Like, you need to back off kind of thing. So I just wanted to have a conversation with her and just say, look, like, I just want you to compliment and say, you're doing a good job. You're a good mom. Mm-hmm. You picked out some cute clothes. Your crib is nice. Something. All, all I, I just want her to get off my back yeah. because I didn't need that. Like, new moms need support. They don't need judgment. And she went ballistic. So I'm like, okay, that's where he gets it from if this is really his mother, right? So she packs up her suitcase, and then Milos goes with her. So I've just given birth. 
I, I've sold, left Los Angeles. I'm now in San Diego. And the father of my child just moved out with his mother and went to a hotel with oh the dog. This took off. Yeah, and then from there, he would come back like every day or every couple of days and just scream at me and like unhinged craziness, throwing clothes, slamming doors. Like I remember like one time I was just sitting on the bed and like he, I all I said to him, and it wasn't, I wasn't saying anything to set him off. I would say, I wish things could just go back to the way they were before. And then he would just be, that would be enough to set him off because well, he's just looking for something yeah. to go right. crazy. It's sorry to interrupt, but you haven't talked about him being a dad once in this story. Because like, he's, he's not. I mean, I, I, the, way want... I, the way I look at you as a glorified sperm donor, but that's just. That's like <laughs> that's our dad. That's like our dad. <laughs> that's what we consider him. But, well, but, he probably regrets that now. <laughs> probably. But did he, he got the last laugh. Yeah. At that point, I started taking notes because I thought legally, and he kept threatening to get lawyers involved, and it was just freaking me out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm running out of money. I'm in San Diego. I, d I don't have any friends here, which is, I think, what he wanted. I was completely isolated. And because he's a doctor, he was telling me I couldn't take him around people for the first month because their immune systems are so delicate. Mm. So all I had to do all day was wait at the apartment and, like, beg him to come back home, right? Right. So um, I'm one time my, when my mom, like Mila should come over and he was screaming at me, my mom just needed the diapers because they were in the room. And she said she opened the door and I was literally sitting on the bed just like sobbing and shaking. And Milos ran at, at her like he was going to hit her. And he's like, you get out, you get out and slam the door in her face. Oh, my God. So I, I think it, I knew at that point, like I needed, I'm going to break up with this you guy. I need to take notes. I don't know. I, I, so I, I knew enough from like legal stuff from my mom just having issues with neighbors that you need mm. to have dates and times. Like mm. we had a neighbor's dog that was really aggressive when I was younger. <laughs> so I like, I knew like that when it comes to legal things, you need to have a list. Like right. that's, that's what they care about is dates, times, events, and you have to know it. So I, I was like, and I think he felt it too. I was fully ready to like break up with him, but then he got really sick. So he had this like um, white stripe down the back of his throat, laryngitis, like sweating all night, like really, really sick. So him and his mom went to the hospital and they ran some tests and then it came back that he had cancer. Oh, man. So he told me that he had um, melioid fibrosis, which is a very aggressive like blood cancer. Wow. And, and in that moment, everything was forgiven. I was like, Ma I told my mom, I'm like, you need to go home because I need to fix this with the baby daddy. And like, that would make sense why he's been so angry because he has cancer. And I let him back into my mm. life. So, but the first day that my mom, and I just, even then I knew it was, I knew it wasn't right. Like I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And I was too tired to really, I couldn't right. think straight. I just had a baby. Yeah, exactly. So, um, my mom left and that, that day he came over and I just wasn't like, I was smiling, but I wasn't super happy. I was like, I, I learned with Milos that I always smile. I was always happy, but like he read through that I wasn't really happy about her leaving. I didn't feel as safe without having mm. her there and having some sort of protection. So... We went out to lunch and then he was like saying like, oh, you just want me to die and all this stuff. And we got in the car and he like popped a wheelie in front of all these cars, raced us back to the apartment. He was just like screaming at me like, you're the fault. Like you caused this. Like you're the reason I have cancer. You like oh put it on God. me, the stress. And at that point, I kept worrying about our son and protecting yeah. him. And I was just trying to keep him calm. So he was driving crazy. We got back to the apartment. I got my son upstairs, put him in the crib. And then I was like, I need to call 911 again because he's out of control and I now have a child to protect. Right. So again, it was like deja vu. Chases me to another room, wrenches my hand, oh my like, and my pinky. And, and yeah, so uh, he took away my phone for most of the day. But when he did mm. give it back, I went into the closet really quickly. because my, my son had spit up on me. That happens with babies. Yeah. Like, mine ate a lot. So he was like, he was a projectile vomiter. <laughs> so there's always fluids coming you out. You could have used him as a weapon. Yeah, I could have. <laughs> oh, so cute. I can't even tell. Like, I, like, I, I, I think I'm just completely, I'm not biased at all. Like, he was like a little Disney character with his big eyes and long oh, eyes. I've seen pictures. He's adorable. He's so, he's, so adorable. It's not fair. Like, even at the park, the girls are like, hi. Yeah. Like, oh, man. Is, right? Ladies, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm in so much trouble. I'll have to teach him about like prophylactics at like 10. Right. I'm, really, I'm really worried. Okay, so um, I, I went into the closet, took a photo of my hand, and I changed the lock screen just in case. And I thought, I, don't, I may need this because this is another incident of domestic mm -hmm. violence. But then I, I, because he has cancer, I justified it. I was like, well, he's sick. Right. He's got all this stuff. Like it's, you know, whatever. And also, too, I forgot one detail, too. When we, when I, before he had moved back in, one night I was, like, literally begging for him to come home. And my mom said, I, I remember it, and I have, like, you know, I wrote it down. I was, like, she said, you should never have to beg someone to love you. Because I was begging him, like, why don't you just come home? Like, I, we have a baby. Why aren't you yeah. here? So I had, like, broken down in the shower, and he let himself in and then came and, like, talked to me and, like, kind of calmed me down. But that, yeah, it's just messed up. But mm -hmm. 
so once the the cancer thing happened then i was up like you know basically trying to like take care of him while he was sick and i wasn't allowed to go to his treatments but he would come back with like band-aids and mm -hmm. things from them drawing blood because again a small child you do not want to take them to right. a hospital around sick people with their immune system right. so i wanted to go like be there for him but i really couldn't all i could do was text him all day long and see how it was going and he would sweat all night long like his shirts would be soaked he um he was losing weight he would throw up in the shower like he was shaking his heart would be racing like things that you know go along with the drugs that he said I, he was on but then he said they misdiagnosed and he had um lymphoblastic leukemia which would be easier to treat and he kept saying like three months and i should be better three months like that was his timetable well he, the two drugs that he told me he was on that his mom were paying for was rituximab or rituxin and interferon alpha. And being the nerd that I am, I was up on my phone while I was like, had done it. Yeah. And yeah. I was, I was like, oh, I want to know what he's going through. I'm yeah. like, okay, rituximab or rituxin, how do they administer it? So I was reading through like the drug page and it says, this is administered by IV. Mm. And that was when like the light bulb in my head went off because he didn't have a mark on him. And I was in the hospital when I gave birth and they put an IV in my hand. And you bruised. You get a huge bruise. Yeah. Yeah. And if he if they're doing this every two days and leaving it in, he would have bruises all over, all over his arms. Right. Yeah. Uh. And I was like, that asshole is faking cancer. So at that point, that, at that point I knew I had to get out because I'm living with a crazy person, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. But I had to be smart and be an actress and pretend like I'm still in love with you and worried oh about you, right? So I made this plan with my mom. We thought we, we would, um, she would come over, we would at least just get away and we report what happened to me and the mafia stuff and all the stuff, the crazy stuff he's told me because at that point too, he started telling me that he's killed people, that he had seen what? bodies nailed to the wall, heads in soup, that his family could find me anywhere, that if I disappeared, like I would see a white van Wait, and I would start shaking. So he was telling so. you this just like, just to tell you, just, but not like threatening you. No. But, like, like low key threatening. Yeah. Oh that, that, and oh, uh, and that um his um family knew the Albanian mafia that was in San Diego that's drug running and like oh, wow. he, that there's connections like they have connections everywhere. Basically that he could find me no matter where I went. Oh my god, that's terrifying. Wow. So yeah, so we had this plan that my mom would come over, we would go up to cuz I I genuinely had some meetings in LA. I was signing with my new manager. I was like there were some things I had to do. Like there's reasons why and I had to get my hair fixed like this lady butchered it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> really bad. Not yeah. a hot, not a good moment. Like I was like I do not need this right now. It looked like like a durable chew on oh, it. Oh no, you're like this is the like, last thing I need right horrible now. horrible hair. Oh, on top man. of me. Yeah, and I like my hair is my one thing I really like. Right. So I'm like I take pride in it. Um so when we're in, um, when when we are, when she we get to L.A. and then I call the police station. They said you have to report the crime in the city in which it oh, no. happened. I was like, I do not want to go back to San Diego. So at that point, I broke up with him via text. But then he was sending things like, you know, think about this, think about who my family is, like kind of like veiled threats. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna die, but I'm leaving them. Basically, is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Like they're gonna come at any moment. We were at an Airbnb and I remember just like, I couldn't sleep all night because like every little noise, I would just think oh that they're God, coming to get terrifying. me, right? Wow. Yeah. And I had been so conditioned and abused at that point that I was just, I wasn't, I'm not like, it's taken me a long time to get past that. But um, so we, <laughs> I break up with him via text. I tell him to leave, like leave the car keys, leave the debit card that he was on my account at that point, L like leave the key to the apartment. Well, he did, but the problem was the door was locked. So we knew he had an extra key mm -hmm. because you couldn't. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that you had to lock it the outside. Yeah. outside. Oh, man. So um, the apartment building immediately changed the locks for me. And then I called the police. And my mom warned me because she was a meter maid in Great Falls. She grew up with all these, like, cops. Okay. And she's like, they're going to be really hard on you because it's their job because they want to weed out the people that are lying and aren't. But yeah. I had I wasn't prepared for, like, I literally thought the guy wasn't going to believe me. But I was telling him about, like, look, he's told me he's mafia. Here's all these things. Here's the photos. He's like, well, why did you why did you wait to report this? And I'm like, because I didn't know anyone. And right. at that point, I thought he had cancer. Like, so it was a month after this happened that I reported it to the police, uh, and he did give me a temporary restraining order, like the paperwork to fill it out, which was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Because normally they do, if it's over a week, even they don't, they don't. But the, the cop, I could feel at the end, like the cop, like the whole attitude changed. And he just, like, he told me, he's like, don't go out after after dark. Like, just, you know, basically get out of here is what he was telling me. Like, right. put in security cameras. Don't talk to anyone. So I went by myself the next day. I took an Uber, terrified, to, like, downtown San Diego and went through, because they have free legal stuff, stood in line and got, like, a paralegal to file my temporary restraining order. And 
then then at that point we started the legal part but what was crazy is i thought okay if he was lying about cancer what else was he lying right, about right? right so i be i basically became my own private investigator i'm actually really good at it so <laughs> like i had i had no idea like this is actually a calling for me so i started with bunny so i contacted her and i said look i'm so sorry like i didn't respond back when you reached out here's what happened like and, I, and i'm like thank god i didn't insult her or was rude to her right. she immediately got on the phone with me and sent me a long email and she's like i tried so hard to warn you okay she's not a call girl she's a high-end marketing businesswoman oh, right uh, and she just thought he had money so she's yeah. like i thought he had money so she's like i was into him and then i realized Ugh. But come to find out his cousin that he told me that was in Marina Del Rey wasn't his cousin. It was just like a guy that owned all these like businesses. So he was like an entrepreneur that okay. had a ton of money. There's a pattern. Okay. But, so Bunny said that he came to the US on a student visa or a tourist visa and was just looking for rich women, had met um, Oksana and basically, uh, you know, saw like an opportunity to get money and married her and that he's like not a doctor he's not all these things like he's just basically a fraud oh wow God. so and she um so then then from there i was like okay he told me he had a residency i'm gonna contact this doctor that's mm -hmm. at umi medical center which doesn't exist but yeah. it's an actual matter <laughs> okay but um so I, I sent him an email and i said well can you answer this question about regarding his residency residency he's like well he had an unpaid internship at my lab he basically showed up got his id badge that showed that he worked there and then never came back again oh, so then he had a id badge from this from this big medical center showing that he worked there he had put it on his linkedin his facebook everything so it would look like he works at this hospital wow. but he didn't so then i contacted the guy that he told me he was doing plastic surgery with right or i i, I also hired a, a private private investigator because legally i had got a lawyer and then some things like they had to contact so the private investigator contacted this guy and he's uh, this this famous plastic surgeon here mm -hmm. in beverly beverly hills and he says, well, I, he's been allowed to observe some, but he's never actually done any facelifts. So he has these photos of him in scrubs in a medical room looking like he's in surgery, but he was just allowed because he's friends. Oh my God. So what I, what I started to realize is like, he was like the wingman. Yeah. So he would butter up to all these rich guys that are successful and around and they, he would get perks while he free drinks and he would help them get women because he was good looking. Mm. Oh my God. If so, he spent as much time, you know, f faking sh as he did no. do real shit. He could have actually become one, right? Yeah, and then I started, and then I just Googled his name. I'm like, okay, you said he was a famous tennis player, right? So I go on Google. There is a Milos Mihailovic who is ranked, but he's way younger than him. Then he told me he had composed music, right? There is a Milos Mihailovic who composes music, but it's not him. Oh my God. Wow. So, so he was stealing other people's identities. I, I don't even know if his name is Milos. I don't even know. I, he spoke four languages, like that was real, but I don't know who this person is, if his age was right. And that was so terrifying for me because who did I follow? Yeah. <laughs> Who is this guy? Like, who is this person? Right. Um, yeah, so we ended up going through a five-day court battle, which was 15 hours, and I was awarded a – it was a, it was supposed to be longer, but the date got messed up, but it doesn't really matter. But I got a two-year restraining order, which tells you something, because most restraining orders are six months to a year. Right. Anything beyond that already tells the court that they're a bad guy. So that, yeah, then I ended up going back to Arizona to be around my mom because I just needed to heal and just for safety reasons because my mom's got guns and a big fence. <laughs> so, <laughs> if she Arizona. grew up on a farm. No, I mean, she's she's a farm girl. Like yeah. you're, you're out, you, you learn how to use a rifle you at a very young age. Herd, right? Yeah. I mean, because the, back then they had like a radio, but they didn't have cell phones. So if something yeah. went wrong, it's kind of like you and your pistol are all <laughs> right? like, ah. Do your thing. Yeah. yeah. So wow. that's, that's like the highlights. But then then during my trial, I started writing and I did not expect to write a book. It was just like therapy. I, like, I felt like I was going crazy. Like I needed to tell someone. So I just started telling my laptop. Oh my God. And I sent some chapters over to my manager and she's like, we need to shop this. Like we need to, your story needs to get out there. So we started shopping it around, but most places wouldn't take a chance on it because it was so controversial. Yeah. But we finally found a publisher that was like, had big enough balls. They're like, okay, let's do this. That's amazing. So then, yeah, then I end up like, I basically just gave you the cliff notes. It's even crazier than that, but. Wow. That, yeah. Listen, I'm ready to go buy this book on Amazon right now. <laughs> so it's, on, can... it's on Amazon and iBooks and Audible, Audible and Google Play and everywhere. Wow. But it's... I mean, and for me, like I still get messages every single day from women that are victim and men too that have or people that are related to someone who had domestic violence incident, and they're always like, "Thank you," because there's such a stigma around it that people are ashamed of it when they shouldn't be because they're oh, not yeah. the ones at fault. 100. Wow. percent And yeah. I just want to say on that topic real quick, the National Domestic Violence Hotline number is one. 800 799 7233 
or you can visit thehotline.org for yeah. anyone going through a similar situation. There is people out there who are, are willing to help. So call, get help. Um, but yeah. that, yeah, and I think the biggest thing, like I, I said before, is you tell as many people as you possibly can because yeah. there are strength in numbers. You safely get yourself out of a situation. You make a plan so you can get away. And then you don't let that define you. Like that's right. been the biggest thing for me. Mm-hmm. Like that was what's hard. I wanted everyone to know my story, but then I didn't want to be known as the girl that right. yeah. had gone through this. But it, it was worth it just for people to not go through what I went through. Like yeah. I feel like God of the universe gives you certain things in your path and it's what you do with it. It's <laughs> called A Sucky Love Story, Overcoming Unhappily Ever After. Yeah. Check it out. But like I have a question. So No, I'm sure you have plenty. I have so <laughs> many questions. <laughs> I, like what so so you you got this to your restraining order but did that actually stop him because i know i hear stories of people getting restraining orders but that doesn't actually stop anything there's a lot of stuff that's happened that i can't talk about Mm -hmm. but the like the intimidation didn't stop after you know i was getting calls from i can say that i was getting calls from russia i had like fake auditions like during my that was in my books anything in the book i can talk about because it's been i had to write a legal copy and my lawyer had to go through each chapter and i had to link everything to court transcripts and receipts because when you write something like this you have to have receipts right Whatever happened with the mom? Oh, I don't. I don't even know if that's his mom. Like, I mean, um, I, I like, I don't know. They don't. They don't really look alike. I mean, we thought maybe like she was someone that was going to buy the child, or I don't know. I mean, because he kept telling oh. me, "There's." A, have you heard um, that movie called Rachel we- with Rachel Weisz called The Whistleblower? Have you seen I that? I haven't heard of it. I didn't see it's, it. It's all. It's like it's heartbreaking. Don't watch it because it's like based on a true story, and those were the hardest to watch. But it's when Yugoslavia broke apart, the peacekeepers, like our people, came in and we helped traffic women in Bosnia. So he used to say, if you want to know about my family, just watch that. So basically he was telling me that his family is like involved in this kind of business. Like human trafficking. Well, he kept trying to get me to go to Serbia. And he oh ca- he tried God. first to get my mom to go when I just had Rex. He said, oh, I have this necklace. It's a push present. And my mom's like, I'm not going to Serbia yeah. to help you bring a necklace back to the United States. <laughs> no way. Yeah, that sounds sus. Yeah. yeah. So and then he then he he was convinced too that like when my like okay well we'll wait till he's like six months old. It's like well then that's when he could travel safely on an airplane and get us both over there. Oh so I'm just like I was saved in so many ways. Do you ever think like what could have happened had you gone? Yeah, and that's what's terrifying is that I feel like like in the end like my child is what saved me. It's yeah. like I stepped up and the strength that I didn't have to leave him and stand up. Like all of a sudden I was like, you're not gonna mess with me, my child. Like I will. You have if if you haven't been through a court process, you have no idea how terrifying it is because you're spending all this time and money, and you there are no guarantees mm-hmm. that they're gonna believe you that you're gonna get the protection that you need. And like the, I was like, it was just you know, multiple people. There's four people that testified that he was mafia because he didn't just tell me. He had told my mom, which the judge still thought my mom was credible. Because parents are usually not the yeah. most credible witnesses because mm-hmm. they love their kids. Right. But he's like, I found her credible. And then he had told um, Bunny that he was mafia, and he had told my brother that oh my he was mafia. So. But it was weird because it didn't. That's why I don't. I don't know. It, I've talked to some people that are from that area, and they uh, and like you know Serbia, and they said, well, everyone's in some sort of mafia in that part of the world. But do they really have the reach to the U.S.? Probably not. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if that's true. It was right. like everyone wants to help and like give you answers sometimes, but you it just like their own definition of what's true maybe isn't true. Right. <laughs> I I was left with more questions than oh answers. Oh my god. No, I I feel like everyone is probably left with tons of questions. And like I said, go read her book if you want some more information i i I think this is the craziest story that's ever been on the share your scare podcast yeah for sure (laughs) i'm sure you'll be able to top it you're in los angeles just give it it some time right (laughs) so since you met him on tinder like have you ever been on a dating app again would you ever i um was so anti-dating apps until recently but Uh with covid i kept thinking i'm like i had this fantasy i'm like i'm like i'm just gonna like be at church or out and i'll just meet somebody and i'm like that's the best way it's just like in person and yeah. not because I honestly hate swiping. Mm-hmm. And but now I I am back on Bumble, but I research everyone before I go on a date with them. If I'm going, I just send my mom their phone number. Tracking is on, like she has tra- where she can track where my location is. Yeah. I send the restaurant. If I'm going to a new place, she knows exactly where I'm going. I'm very careful. I don't let them pick me up. I meet in a public place. Like I just you know I'm not as trustful, but like you know I'm not. I'm more careful. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I was anti, but now I'm I'm not, like I'm not because if I'm going to meet anyone like before I turn sixty, I need to do something. <laughs> right, you need yeah. to be proactive. About yeah, hundred percent. Do you feel like that? I mean, obviously, you just kind of explained some situations, but like, because I feel like for me, like I would have 
trust issues up the the wing hang it from was, here. You it know? was it was weird at first because I just like wouldn't look people in the eye and I hated everyone because yeah. I just been and I, like you understand like my dream from a young age was acting and filmmaking and it wasn't for fame. It's like I love the craft of it, right? right? So I finally got to Los Angeles. I'd worked my butt off for all these years, got in the house, had a, a good living going, and this person came in and like just took it all away from me and oh basically God. like broke me too. Like yeah. all my money was gone. I had no choice but to sell and leave. And that is extremely humbling when you work so hard. But then I had this adorable little child that I had to show up for every yeah. single day. And he is still like the most happy, sweet, crazy little thing. And he loves his mama. Oh, that's so, so sweet. So he got my personality. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I was so worried. I'm like, because, you know, my ex was obviously a sociopath. And yeah. it, like he, it's like he is this book. If you want to freak yourself out, read A Sociopath Next Door. It's written by like Harvard professor. Because one in 25 people are a sociopath. Wow. And wow. so, like, sometimes, but they're not, they're not all, like, abusive or crazy, mm -hmm. but sometimes just the guy that's sleeping on his mom's couch and refused to move out and living off his parents is a sociopath. Right. Like, there's, they just don't care. So yeah. it's, what was scary for me was realizing that I love this person that didn't feel anything for me. It was all about control, power. Like, it appealed to him that there was this thing online that he would have some attention. Does that make sense? Yeah. That appealed mm -hmm. to his... his sociopathic nature wow and and this was like about five years ago in 2006 four, well four. he was yeah well because it was i left um him when my son was four months old and he just turned four in december oh, so man. it's like four a, years mm -hmm. so has he tried to reach out to you at all or has can't, he said anything about the books can't i can't talk about it oh, like okay. legally i just right. can't i'm, yeah, I'm literally constricted it has crap like thing let's just say it doesn't have to do with Mueller. says stuff gone down that's a little weird yeah Wow. I'll just wink at it, but um, I can't. I, yeah, I I'm literally because the you have to have like special insurance to even make a YouTube video to talk about this stuff, and it would have cost me thirty thousand dollars, and I couldn't do that. Really? Yeah, you, you know insurance. You've heard of that, right? Yeah. Errors and emissions. I've and I'm not like, heard I'm like, great. I just spent like fifty thousand dollars on lawyers. Like, you want me to spend another thirty thousand to be able to tell people Damn what happened? Story. Wow. And that was that was really hard for me too because everyone online was kind of saying that I'm milking it. Like, why don't I just come out? Like, why aren't you guys together? Like, you know, I was getting a lot of, and I'm like, you don't understand. I've been I abused yeah. and my money's taken. And, yeah. Like it was, it was a good strengthening point in my life too. And I think what's been good about all of this has been like the recovery process, because I think I also owed it to every woman that has been through this, that is going through it at the same time as me to see that I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, you know, I'm making something with my life. Like I love my child. He's not a problem just because of the dad. Yeah. Right. And I guess that was like going to lead me into my next question is like, you know, sometimes bad things happen to good people. Yeah. What was the biggest learning lesson that you could take from this whole situation oh I, i've said this so many times but just trust your instincts like they are there for a reason like mm -hmm. if you if you feel uncomfortable like my mom uh, like she's so wise she talked about this one guy who used to be secret service and he teaches people how to protect themselves and he said if you come up to an elevator and your instincts say don't get on it don't get on it and so I would get chill. I mean, that, that's yeah, I just, just got some chill yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's that's a good thing. That if your instincts tell you you want to go home and you're on a date, go home. Right. If your instincts say don't get in your car or or like maybe just hang out here for five more minutes, listen to your that's instincts. Hundred percent. I for agree. sure no because uh, that's what? when that's when you get in trouble it's like right. you know that you probably know it from the girls too that you've had in your life that have mm -hmm. you know messed with you i've been the ones that you're like they're so hot but they were crazy and when i just listened to the exactly yeah. my brain. the signs were there I but know. you just don't listen you're to so them. blinded you oh know and you God. figure yeah. it out after you look back and you're like i was so stupid yeah <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah that is the one of the biggest lessons i have learned is really to like even in the moments just to slow down and really think about what you're doing before yeah. you do it because yeah. you don't know how that'll affect you later in life yeah Wow. And, I, and I thought because I had been in Hollywood, I was, you know, and I was always a horrible networker. Like I was mm -hmm. really good at making friends. And that's how I, I was like, okay, then I'm good at networking. Right. Because I'm not, I was never, like, I hated going, like, when I would, I had a friend that was making a movie and invited me out where all these big agents were going to be to this party. And this guy, like, actually seemed like he's interested in, like, what I was doing in my career. And then by the end of the night, he's like, well, we go going bowling and, like, patting my butt because he's drunk. And I was like, I hate that part yeah. of Hollywood. And that does exist. The oh, casting yeah. couch is, is alive and thriving. Like, so, <laughs> I, true. I, like, you know, making something online, I'd prided myself on creating something myself, being able to get away from that but i thought i thought i was wise to the world and i i am very humbled now wow
Oh my God, what a story that was, Brittany! Thank you for coming on and You're sharing welcome. this. Thank you so much. How, how is how is your your son now? Oh, so cute. How many like, pictures after this? Uh, yeah, I'll spam you <laughs> if spam you want, me, please. No, he's he's literally the cutest thing on the planet, and like he every day has some new word or sentence. Oh. So, like he was telling my mom yesterday in the car, which is so funny. He's like, he's like, I know love grandma, and he's like, what? He's just because he knew it messed with her. He's like, I know love grandma. <laughs> I know love grandma, and I'm like, that's so mean. Say so you love grandma. He goes, no. <laughs> oh my God. So he but he th- and he's got this cheeky little look. Yeah. And my mom's going, that hurts. Why are you saying you don't love me? He goes, I know love grandma. <laughs> and like it's just he's just such a prankster. He's a little uh, character. Yeah, and everything is like the W. So Rex is Wex. Wex, Wex, Wex Taylor. Wex Taylor. <laughs> I love that name. So Rex cute. Taylor. Rex is so yeah. cute. Yeah. Such a cute name. Look, I think that's almost all the time we have on the podcast. Probably. Yeah. I was like, I was like, when you said forty minutes, I'm like, I need to talk really fast. <laughs> Don't it even. Was what you, you, it so was, worth uh, it. It was so worth it. I, uh, I really, you know, I, I commend you for going through all that because that is crazy. Like, I think yeah. most people would have folded at some point in way before you lasted a lot longer than um, I would have lasted. Well, I don't I don't think you know your strength until you go through something. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I think anyone going through something like this, like if you're in the thick of it, like get out, but also too like you are stronger than you know. Right. Yeah. And I'm so surprised that you're still like posting on YouTube. You're still like out there verbally like well, I got like, angry. I yeah. was like, he is not going to take, I will not let him take away one more moment of my life. And mm-hmm. if it's not as popular, because I'm not, I'm single and there's like, not, we're not about a big yeah. house. And like, you know, who cares? Like, yeah. I'm doing it for me. I'm going forward. And that says something. Yeah. yeah. 100%. And we wish you nothing but the but most success. And, and uh, I will totally give you all the hot spots to find hotties. <laughs> that's you, what I'm talking you can about. Find, you can find your own crazy. There we go. <laughs> it goes full circle, baby. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for listening to the Share Your Scare podcast. Again, go. Go and sh- go and listen to her book. Go buy it on Amazon, Audible, wherever it may be. Again, it's called A Sucky Love Story, Overcoming Unhappily Ever After. Brittany Louise Taylor, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Where can the people find you if they don't know you right now? It's YouTube.com forward slash Brittany Louise Taylor. Instagram is Brittany Louise Taylor Picks. Brittany with an I. It's way too long. It's P-I-C-S. Um, <laughs> Twitter is Brittany Taylor. Facebook's Brittany Taylor Fans. It's super confusing. Just find me on one of the links around there. <laughs> there you go. There you go, go check her out. Yeah. And until next time, that was the Share Your Scared Podcast. We will see you guys later. Peace. Peace. Thanks for listening to Sus, Share Your Scare. Make sure to subscribe and check back every Wednesday for new episodes, and don't forget to tell your friends. Follow all of our social media links at shareyourscare.com. We're going to be doing tons of giveaways, but only for our most active fans. If you have a scare of your own that you want to share, leave us a voicemail. Our number is 626-275-8695. Or if you just want to shoot us an email, our email is shareyourscarepod at gmail.com. And that's spelled with a U-R. Until next Wednesday, stay sus.